For the following exercises, use each pair of functions to find f of g of x and g of f of x, and then we just need to simplify our answers. Okay, so we got two different types of functions here, well, two different pairs. We have this pair over here with f and g of x, and this pair with f uh, of x and g of x as well. And for both of these, we have to find the composite functions of f of g of x and g of f of x. Okay, so let's take it from the top on the left side. I'm just going to label this A. We need to find f of g of x. Okay, now memorize this notation, guys. This is when we're making composite functions. Composite functions is just an easy way or, you know, a fancy way of saying I'm taking two independent functions, the f function and the g function, and I'm putting them together. And that's all that it is. You're just taking two functions, putting them together so that you can come out with one answer. All right. Now, with composite functions, you always work from inner function to outer function. Inner to outer, I'm going by parentheses, all right? So the innermost function is the inner one with, you know, inside the parentheses to the outer one, all right? So now in this case, it looks like my g of x function is the inner function because it's the innermost parentheses guy. And my outer function is the f function. So work from inner to outer. So for part one or number one, you're going to plug in the input, it's usually a number, for the inner function. And you're just going to use your algebra to solve. So for 1, oh boy, 1, I'm just going to take my inner function. They told me it was just g of x. So I'm literally writing g of x. Now I said down here it's usually a number because normally it would be like g of 2 or g of 3. But in this case, it's just g of x. That was an ugly x. Okay. So I can't really plug in any numbers. So I literally just copy this. g of x is 5x plus 1. The second part is now, you know, after you're done simplifying, but we can't do that now because it's already in simplified form. We're going to take the new input that we just solved for and plug it in into the outer function. So now here comes the outer function. The outer function comes in at number 2. The outer function was the f function. So now I'm going to take f, and I'm just going to plug in the answer that I got for the first part, 5x plus 1. So now you bring in your f function. The f function was the absolute value of x. But now I just input this guy. So wherever there's an x, you just plug in. So this would be 5x plus 1. Do you see that? This was the square root of x, but I just change all my x's for my input from before. And now, if you can, simplify it. But eh, I can't really simplify, there's no like terms here. So I'm going to say f of 5x plus 1 is the same thing as f of g of x because we're getting our final answer here. And this is equal to the absolute value of 5x plus 1. And there is your answer to the first part. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Now we just got to do the opposite. Now let's see if we get the same answer. It's the same functions. Let's see if we get the same answer if we do g of f of x, inner to outer. The inner function here is now f of x. So for number one, I'm going to take f of x. And f of x was just the absolute value of x. They didn't give me a number, so I can't simplify, so I move on to the second part. I now use my outer function and plug in, ooh, outer, plug in for the, the output that I had before. So it's g of the absolute value of x. It's this guy. Beep. And all I'm doing is I'm plugging it in here. So for all the x values that I see, I got to plug in the absolute value. So it would be 5 absolute value of x because it was an x before. I'm just substituting plus 1. Clean it up if you can, but this one, 5 times the absolute value plus x, 
You can't simplify that. That's already in simplified form. So I'm going to say g of the absolute value of x equals the same thing as g of f of x, because we're getting the final answer, and that is 5 times the absolute value of x plus 1. And there you go. Not bad. Now, just notice two things. Even though it's the two of the same functions, for both of them I used f of x and g of x, the answer is not the same. Composite functions are independent. They, the mat, the, um, the placement of which function is the inner one, which function is the outer one, that's important, all right? So just make sure you can't interchange them. Okay, moving on to the second one. A, let's do f of g of x first. This is the inner function. The f function, which will come in step two, that's the outer function. So for number one, the inner function was g of x, and what was g of x? Oh, it was just this. x plus one all over x cubed. Okay. Can't simplify that, so... I'm going to take this answer that I just got and plug it in for f, and it's this guy. So it would be f x plus 1 over x to the third. So whenever you plug in an x value, that's what you're going to get. So let's see. We got um rad the cube root of x plus 1 over x to the third. Now technically you can simplify this, you could break this up. Um, should I simplify? I guess so, right? So f of x plus 1 over x to the 3 equals the same thing as f of g of x. This is the same thing as saying the cube root of x plus 1 over the cubed root of x cubed. So now we can, we can simplify that. So can't really do anything on the top, but a cubed root raised to the third, bye-bye, that goes away, and you're just left with x. A cube root and raising something to the third is the same answer. So I'm going to put it over here as my simplified version. The simplified answer would be the cube root of x plus 1, put a 3 in there, that means cube root, over x. And that is your final answer for the first one. So I'm just going to box this off. Okay. Now let's see, are we going to get the same answer for the other one, the other composite function? Let's see for b. Now we just got to do g of f of x inner function is the f of x. So 1. f of x is the cube root of x. Can't simplify that, but let's move on to part 2. I'm going to take this answer and plug it into my g of x function. That's the outer function. So g of this answer, 3 rad x, equals the g function was this. Wherever you see an x, you replace it with this value. So I got a cube root of x plus 1 over the cube root of x cubed. You see that? x cubed. So I got to keep that cubed in there. Now, can I simplify? Oh, yeah, I can. I'm going to say g of, ooh, g of the cubed root of x, which is the same thing as, because we're getting our final answer, g of f of x, I'm just going to the top, this all equals, I can't simplify the top, but what did we say? A cube root and raising something to the third, they go bye-bye. <laughs> They're inverses of each other. So I can simplify this by saying the cubed root of x plus 1 all over x, and that is the final answer. So I'm going to just highlight that for you guys. Look at that. Did we get the same answer? Uh, nope. No, we didn't. 
and we shouldn't because composite functions are independent, meaning that if I flip the way of writing it, you will get a completely different answer. They do look very close, but notice where the square root ends here. The square root is the whole thing, well, the cube root. The cube root here is only for the x value. So, guys, this was fun, all right? Math is awesome. <laughs> um, it's just like doing a puzzle. So, yeah, I mean, once you get it, it should come easier to you, and I hope I you know, taught this to you in the easiest way. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you want to help us out, click the subscribe button, like this video, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up, whatever they call it. Uh, thank you so much, and I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.